Hi everyone, welcome back to Rich Reviews. And today I'm gonna to talk you through the wheel recoloring for my 458 Spider. And I'm also gonna cover off the technical aspects of how to remove the wheels in your own garage. So I'm gonna split the video down into a few stages. The first stage, I'm going to give you an overview of why I'm changing the wheel color on the 458. Secondly, I'm going to talk you through the actual tools you need to actually elevate your car within your own garage, assuming you're going to elevate it in a garage. You can obviously do this outside as well. And I'm going to also then talk you through the safe approach that you should be using to elevate the car, the different axle stand positions and the different jacking positions that you should be using for a 458. So why am I recoloring the wheels of my 458? Many moons ago when we had the 458 fully PPF'd and paint corrected, we had the wheels recolored at the same time because originally the wheels were black. If you're, if you're not sure about that, then check out the early videos on the 458. You can see the actual side skirts and the wheels were actually black on, the, on our 458 Spider. Now I wanted to recolor them back to silver, but there was, uncertainty about the actual color codes that should be used to recolor the wheels and because they were getting done by the same company that was performing the full PPF coverage installation um, <clears throat> we went we decided to go with Argento Nürburgring silver but Argento Nürburgring silver wasn't the original color that the car was specced with it was specced with what's called bright silver we went with Argento Nürburgring silver which is the color that the wheels have been ever since the car was PPF'd we were always going to take the color of the wheels back to the original bright silver and it's, it's a good time to do it now because we're changing the tires on the car to Michelin Pilot Sport 4S's from the original Pirelli P0's. And we do, why are we doing that? Well, because those tires are now eight years old on the car, well, well out of date and well in need of replacement. And also they're quite worn. So we're amalgamating the two items. We're getting the wheels recolored back to the original colors. And we're also getting the tires replaced at the same time. It's a no cost option to get the tires fitted at the same time because you've got to remove the tires to recolor the wheels anyway. So it's obvious to get it done at the same time, therefore saving a little bit of money. I procured the tires. And again, if you want to know where I procured the tires from and the tires that I'm fitting and all the, all the details, then check out um, one of my other videos on the tire sidewall markings decoded. I'll put a link to that video below. Now to the technical aspect of how you remove the wheels yourself. Now, a lot of you won't be comfortable with removing the wheels yourself, and that's fair enough. That's totally understandable. I've got a background in mechanical engineering and I used to rebuild engines and perform all my own mechanics on all my cars from an early age forward to about 10 years ago. So I'm quite happy with doing certain jobs on on the Ferrari myself. And if you're not comfortable with removing the wheels yourself, then just either provide your car to a dealership and they'll take the wheels off for you. Um, and maybe that they will recolor the wheels for you as well, we'll get the wheels recolored for you. Or you can take your car to a company like Whoops Wheel Fix It or Lepsons and they will take the wheels off your car and they will refurbish the wheels at the same time. It just depends whether or not you're happy for your car to be stored at those locations while they're, um, while they're performing the wheel recoloring. So, what tools do you need to take the wheels off on a 458 Spider? Now, some of you will think I've gone a bit over the top with regards to these tools, but it makes the job a lot easier having the right tools, guys. First of all, low profile jack. Now, when, when I say low profile, low reach. So low profile and one that elevates quite high. So with regards to this jack, it's a very efficient jack. It's got a dual piston approach, therefore, it pumps up very quickly, it elevates very quickly and elevates to a very good height. Now this is a three ton jack. The car in actual fact is around 1500, 1600 kilograms. So this is well over engineered with regards to picking up this car. It could elevate the whole car in one go, but obviously I'm only gonna be elevating one side at a time. So it's well within specification being a three ton jack. It's a low profile jack and it drops very quickly as well. Now, I did actually update my jack, so this is a new jack. I updated it from this point forward just to make it easy to, to lift this particular car up, to lift my 458 up, because it's quite low clearance on the side. Now, the second thing you need, <clears throat> the jacking points on the 458, especially the rear jacking points, have a seven and a half centimeter diameter. So that's this section across. So this is low profile, but you don't want this section of the jacking arm to catch on the car. <clears throat> so you, you will have heard this many times before, ice hockey puck. 
Now this is actually an ice hockey puck and this is exactly seven and a half centimeters in diameter. So this fits perfectly into the jacking recess for the rear section of this car. Now the other tools that we used, wheel alignment studs or wheel alignment hangers, and that's these. I'm sure some of you will see these. Now you don't just need one, you need at least two. And believe you me, I've never used wheel hangers before on any other cars when I've removed wheels, but on a 458, very, very useful, especially in this constrained space. As you can see again, I haven't got much space there, about 22 and a half inches from the wheel arch to the side of the wall. You do that calculation and see how easy it is to remove the wheels with that sort of width, width of distance available. Now, what other parts do you need? Now, to protect the wheel bolts, these are lovely, glossy, glossy, polished, chromed. Obviously, you don't want to gnarl these up when you're taking the wheel bolts out. So you use special protective tools. Now, this particular tool is a Hills Engineering um, wheel bolt removal socket. And it's actually in two parts, so it actually removes like this. This is actually aluminium, and this is, this is hardened steel. This connects to your socket. It's half inch, so it's half inch size, so you have a good size there for your breaker tool, because you usually use a breaker tool connected to this to actually break the, the connection, to break the torque on each wheel bolt. And this fits with the wheel bolt like so. And the way how the socket is designed, this aluminium is designed, is designed so that the actual points of pressure are on the flats of the stud. This socket actually fits on the flats, it actually locates on the flats and puts the pressure on the flats, not on the corners. So it's not gonna round the corners off and it's not gonna take the chrome off the bolts. So those are the tools. Those are the tools you need, um, the proper tools you need to be able to remove the wheels in a, in a good technical approach and in a safe technical approach. Now, in addition to these specific tools, you'll also need axle stands because once you've taken the wheels off, you need to be able to keep the car safely elevated um, for quite a bit of time. Now, the ones I purchased, again, are as with this trolley jack, SGS, because SGS is a great make. Lots, I did lots of research around this company. They're very well priced and very well engineered. Now, I chose three ton axle stands. So each axle stand can take three tons in weight. As I said before, this car isn't even 1,700 kilograms. So this will take twice the weight of the whole car. One axle stand will take twice the weight of the whole car. So three ton axle stands, and that's what this car is actually elevated on at the moment. So now let's go through the process of actually elevating your car and taking the wheels off. So first of all, you need to go, you need to make sure that the car is secure. Um, you need to make sure that you've got enough space to work around each corner of the car so that you can get a trolley jack in there. Um, you, can, you can loosen off the wheels, you can get your sockets in there to take the wheels off and so that you can get behind the wheel and actually slide the wheel off onto the hangers uh, if you're using hangers and or if you're not using hangers, you can get the weight of the wheel so it doesn't fall onto the caliper. Now for me, very constrained garage, not ideal, but I made it work. First of all, what you need to do is you need to make sure the car isn't on a slope, it's on a flat level surface, and you need to, what's called, break the seal on the bolts. So the bolts are torqued up to a very high torque, as you can imagine, um, because you don't want the wheels coming loose while you're driving. Um, so you need to break that seal, and you use what's called a breaker bar. Um, you use that breaker bar, and you go around each of the bolts, all the way around the car, and you break the seal. So as you break the torque on the bolt, so that when you've got the car elevated, and the wheel perceivably can easily move, especially on the rear, or especially on the front, you wouldn't be able to move the rear anyway, because the gearbox lock will be, will be on, that you can easily remove the bolts um, with a normal socket and a normal socket reach um, ratchet handle. Once you've broken the torque on the wheels, on all the bolts and the wheels, then what you need to do is get the car up in the air. Now, with regards to the engineering of the 458, the, the, the 458 has four jacking points in effect. <clears throat> the jacking points are here for the rear, and then with regards to the front, they're behind the front wheel. In front the rear wheels, behind the front wheels. There's a very strong chassis rail that runs nearly the full length of the side of the car. Um, as you can imagine, it's a spider, so it's strengthened anyway. I elevated the car up um, from that single jacking point from this point, and then I quickly put axle stands under the front, under the front jacking position. So I was able to then use 
that space, the jacking position at the front, which is behind the front wheels, as I've already detailed, I was able to use that location to put the axle stand. So I put the axle stand up first, and then you think, okay, well, he's using the jacking point the here, so where the hell is he gonna put the axle stand in? It's only seven and a half centimeters in diameter, this jacking point, remember? So you think, okay, where's the jacking point gonna go? Well, really cool with the 458. I suspect other Ferraris are like this, other later Ferraris or from the 458 era downstream, but the 458 has two bespoke axle stand locations underneath the car. Fantastic. I couldn't believe it when I saw them. It, these and their and axle stands are shaped in a certain way. I, mean, I can't, unfortunately, I can't show you apart from showing you from this from this image. But you can just see those jack, the jacking points underneath the car fit perfectly with axle stands. They're clearly designed to be used for axles. Now I know they are axle stand points. So when you've elevated the car using your trolley jack on the sides, I say it lifts the whole up up. You put your axle stand on the front behind the front wheel on the on the jacking point on the front, and then you put your rear axle stand in one of the axle stand locations underneath the rear of the car, which is connected directly to the strong chassis points on the car. Then you just do the same on the other side. Once you've got the car in the air and you're sure it's safe, now, I'm not gonna overtly push the car, but it is solid. I mean, that ain't going anywhere, guys. It is rock solid on these axle stands. Once you've got the car elevated and it's stable and it's fixed and it's safe, then what you need to do is start removing the wheels. First of all, you take the wheel bolts, two wheel bolts out as I've detailed, then you put in your two wheel hanger studs opposing each other. So you've got the, the weight distribution of the wheel can slide off onto these hanger studs. Once you've screwed these in, you've got them located, you remove the rest of the bolts for that particular wheel. You slide the wheel out onto these hangers and then you, you get prepared to take the weight as the wheel comes off these hangers, but you've pretty much already cleared the calipers at that stage anyway. And then you take the weight of the wheel, remembering it's, even though these are forged wheels and they're supposed to be lightened forged wheels, they're still quite heavy, you know, it's still quite a heavy 20 inch wheel. So then you take the wheel and then you, you put the wheel down gently. Remember these wheels, even though, like I say, they're, they're forged alloy wheels, they are quite soft. So don't be dropping the wheels on concrete or anything like that. Be very careful how you place the wheels down. And then you, you perform the same action across for all, all the four sides. You've then got the car on axle stands for a few days at least while the, while the wheels are being refurbished or you're having your tires fit, refitted or whatever you're having done with the wheels. It's a perfect opportunity to get in there to have a good look round the wheel arches and I know it sounds sad again but to give the calipers a good clean and in general to what I did was I used GT85 oil and oiled some of the studs that are bare that are showing inside the wheel compartment just you know why not you know you're there anyway so you might, you might as well give it a bit of a clean and oil some of the some of the bare bolts and studs that are available there um, again probably when the car's been serviced it's unlikely that those particular bolts um, because they're not leverage points of leverage they're they're probably not going to get oiled or, or looked after so but the key thing was to get some oil around some of the studs and just to make sure they don't go rusty um, because ferrari unfortunately aren't known for using you know stainless steel bolts on these cars where well, they, they should have done really high tensile stainless steel bolts but they didn't they cheaped out and they used um you know proper bolts but they're steel at the end of the day and still rusts <clears throat> so that's the car elevated on axle stands the wheels are still being refurbished, so I will then have the wheels recolored back to bright silver, brand new Michelin Pilot Sport 4Ss. If you want specific details of the equipment that I've bought, so the model numbers and links to the actual items that I've purchased, then please let me know in the comments below and I'll provide that for you. One of the things that I've realized is that there's very little information out there. In fact, there's no information out there online um, with regards to specifically how you jack these up. When I say jack them up with trolley jack and how you specifically put them on axle stands, there's no technical information. I had to research how to do it and then I had to work it out myself and find that they're, they're you know the axle stand location points etc myself by getting underneath the car and looking find out where the chassis rails are etc etc so um, you know it was a lot harder for me I had to research all that and then look and research it underneath the car uh, but it's a lot I can then provide all that information to you which makes it pretty cool for you <laughs>
by way of magic. We have the wheels back, but what do we have down here? Now, everybody needs a friend like Martin. Thanks again, Martin. Martin's kindly provided the spaces that he used for his 45 Italia, which he's now sold. And these are a circa 12 millimeters. So these are 12 millimeter spaces. So these will push the wheels out slightly more and fill the arches out a little bit more. So we're gonna be putting these spaces on to all four wheels. So we have four spaces for all four wheels. Now make the wheels fill out the arches a bit more. And as I've already detailed, instead of two three fives, we've got two four five tires going on the front. So they're gonna fill out the arches a bit more. So it should look pretty cool. Now, in addition to those additional 12 millimeter spacers, of course, you need longer bolts. If you don't have longer bolts, you're into serious issues with your wheels falling off. Now, when we fit these bolts, we'll just be putting a little bit of oil on the bolts. You do not use Loctite Nylock thread on the threads when you're attaching wheel bolts or putting lug nuts on on your car so never do that guys you'll never get the frigging things off again when you need to in an emergency when you've got a flat so i'm not going to go through the fitting of all the four wheels we'll just provide you the end result by magic good old youtube magic what i'll do is i'll just talk through attaching this rear wheel to this rear side here to this offside uh, offside rear so that you get an appreciation of exactly the process that you need to use using, using the, the bolt hangers or the wheel hangers um, so we get the bolt the, so we get the wheel on there properly and obviously talking down the wheel and etc etc but we'll talk them all down in one go and um, we'll show you that as well but just talking one wheel down at the end and we'll show you how to get the axle stands uh, removed by getting the jack underneath the car jacking up the, the side of the car properly using the proper equipment as i've already shown you getting just this wheel on and then we'll take you through lowering the car down and how to load the car down properly as well as so you have the whole end-to-end -end process and then of course we'll do a reveal and we'll go for a first drive with these michelin pilot sport 4s's k1s so for fitting the wheels on just for fitting the actual wheels on not talking them up just fitting them on I'm going to be using a little bit of white spirit I've already cleaned around these areas anyway I've already cleaned all around the wheel arches where I had the wheels off um, but what I'm going to do maybe use a little bit of uh, white spirit or just have it to hand in case I need it and of course a fairly clean rag for to go along with the white spirit we need our spacer we need our two hangers we need the new bolts the lengthened bolts and they are clean this is just a little bit of oil on the stems and a little bit of lubrication oil now you shouldn't use too much oil this is just a slight amount of oil just to go on the threads and from where they've been used before i think there's a little bit of oil it's still on the thread so i may not even have to use that and of course as i detailed before our special socket which is specially designed so it only puts the only puts the torque and the effort onto the flat surfaces of these lug bolts so it doesn't doesn't damage the chromium plating. It doesn't remove the chromium plating because it's not putting the torque on the actual corners. It's put it on the flats. And this is a special Hills Engineering dual socket, again, that I've already detailed to you. And this first stage part is actually aluminium. So it's going to apply the torque just on the flats. You can see it's slightly different in its design to a normal socket, how it's been engineered. About 100 quid just for that socket. <laughs> Ferrari, although it's Hills Engineering. so And it's a 17 mil, by the way. So it's a 17 mil socket for these 458 bolts. Now, the first thing you need to do is line up the spacer. Now, you won't necessarily be using spacers, but in my instance, I am um, because of my friend Martin providing them for me. Um, so um, be uh, crazy not to make use of them, really. A mallet, rubber mallet. You don't want a hammer. You don't want to be damaging anything. This is just aluminium. So again, I've already cleaned that back place, that back plate surface. So I'm just gently easing on the the spacer onto the onto the surface now if you are putting spacers on when you when you put the spacer on don't just whack it on 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 sides do it gently so you're easing it as you saw i did there i it teased it on around the different surfaces so you don't split the aluminium and you're not bending the aluminium or taking edges off the aluminium and that's now as you can hear from the sound that's now metal to metal so that that spacer is now fully fully fitted and faced on against the actual wheel hub so what we do now is we put our wheel hangers on we put them at opposing points so that you get maximum benefit of using the wheel hangers if i if i did that for example then you've got all the weight on that side um, and you know no you've got all the weight retained here or held here and nothing supported on this side so obviously you want it opposing 
And these are just finger tight. Sometimes you have a gnarly grip on there. These don't, but to be honest, you don't need it. You just need finger tight because it's quite a long thread. It's just to locate it. You don't want to make, put it in there murder tight so you can't get the buggers out afterwards. And then literally you just put the wheel onto these hangers and slide it on. Obviously these hangers then locate the, locate the, the holes so you know that the wheels, the, the wheel holes are aligned to the actual mating surface here. So it makes it a lot easier to make the wheel up and then to put the bolts in. You put the other bolts in, slightly tighten them up and then you put, you take the wheel hangers out and then you put the, the bolts in to replace those wheel hangers. So job done. Fairly simple process guys. It ain't rocket science as they say. Now this is the trickiest part is actually getting the wheels onto the hangers. And this is a byproduct of having a garage that's so small. There we go. You see that guys? And I'm just gonna take the weight. Of the wheel just as I tease it on. So we've got the wheel on the hangers. As you can see because I've got such a constrained space here it's a pain in the ass. If I didn't have wheel hangers it'd be a real nightmare getting this wheel on and um, because it's you know be trying to hold it up trying to put a bolt in meanwhile the wheel's hanging off the caliper damaging it so you've got to be so careful. But that is now lined up. Literally a case of just pushing the wheel in. These are the new bolts little bit of GT85 on the wheel bolts, taking great care not to not to damage anything. Slightly tighten it up. Again, a little bit of oil. Try and put them opposing where possible. Remember, this is aluminium, so it's going to protect the sides of the wheels as well, but still be careful. You can see how the socket is going in, that it is tightening the bolt up. I've got through those five bolts now nipped up just, just slightly, just nipped up just to hold the wheel on so the wheel's not going to wobble. I can now easily remove these wheel hangers. Now get my remaining bolts. Again, making sure I'm not damaging the wheel. So I'm carefully, carefully does it. Now I'm just going to nip these up little bit again you go opposing bolts when you tighten and it'll have the um the auto lock on as well handbrake lock one wheel on three to go won't cover off the other wheels for you you get the gist of it now that's how you safely and competently put a wheel back on after it's been refurbished or after you've had a tire replaced or, or whatever and we'll cover off We'll next cover off how you actually elevate the car to put it to drop it back down off the axle stands and how we then go around and properly torque up the wheels to 100 newton meters. That's the workshop manual torque for these wheels. So fast track forward. I've put all the wheels on now using wheel hangers. I've nipped up to all the bolts and as I've, as I've finished, I've gone around and nipped up all the bolts again just to make sure I have nipped up all the bolts because we don't want to be dropping the car down on loose bolts. We, you always talk the car up when you've dropped the weight down on the car, when you've dropped the whole car down onto the ground. So what we're going to do now is going to drop each side, each side down one at a time. If you remember when I spoke to you before, uh, when I talked about this before, I detailed that you've got such a, a good cross member down the side of the chassis on the 458. Um, I didn't realize it beforehand, but you only actually have to jack up one side if you jack up at the rear and it jacks up the whole side of the car. So what I'm going to do now is just jack up this side of the car and take out the axle stands and then drop this side down and then I'll do the same on the other side. You'll get an appreciation here, guys, of how constrained I am for space. So it's pretty impressive how I managed to actually get the wheels off in the first place. Now, the first thing you do is when you're pulling the jack round, you make sure that you're not scagging the wheel. Now, this is a very maneuverable jack. Um, but even so, you've got to be careful and you have to make sure you've got the, the jack down as low as possible at its lowest point. It's very close cut underneath. Also make sure that you can move the axle stand out 
then we've got a seven, I believe it's seven, seven centimeters or seven and a half centimeters um, diameter across here, which is exactly the same as this puck. So this puck fits in there literally almost exactly in between the plastic part. There's a little bit of tolerance there, but pretty much that's how it fits. So you fit the puck in the bottom of the axle reach part in the, sorry, in the, in the jack reach part. And then what you do is you make sure the handle is tight, like so. Very easy now because we've got the car up on axle stands. So it isn't challenging, but it is, it isn't challenging at this stage, but it is challenging when you're trying to jack the car up to begin with to get it in the air. Now what I do is I put my fingers underneath there, obviously be very careful. I don't recommend you do that guys, but I'm putting my fingers underneath there just to swivel the jack round, just to make sure that the puck is perfectly positioned in that area. And then it's engaged there. I can feel it properly engaged on the chassis point and then just take up the weight there. And then what I'm gonna do is get my backside up off the ground and then I can get the car elevated. I only need to take it up again, making sure that the jack is nice and tight on the handle. This does have a long reach handle by the way, guys, but obviously if I use the long reach handle, it'd be into the wall, so <laughs> I can't use it. But that's fine because it's a very efficient jack. Now what I'm gonna do now is just remove the axle stand. Now I need it up a little bit higher. but you want it only to the maximum height. Okay, so there I've triggered, I've triggered the theft alarm system, the anti-tilt sensor. I've forgotten to switch off the alarm. So first case, switch off the alarm. So rookie mistake there guys, the tilt sensor was triggered because the alarm is on. So switch off the alarm on the car, that switches off the tilt sensor. And then when the car's tilted with you jacking the car up, you don't get such an issue. So there we go, won't get a problem anymore. Now I can remove the axle stands, which we've already done one there. Remove the front one. Bring that to the rear and you can see there guys, the rubber moldings that I have fitted to these axle stands to protect the underneath of the car. And that one where it's been taken a lot of the weight has actually started to get perforated and these were brand new, but they protected the underneath of the car and that's the key thing. Now, what I'm gonna do is let this side of the car down, let it down very gently because this car is gonna come right down and this car, this side's still gonna be elevated. So this side's gonna come down, it's gonna stay elevated. You don't want it, it shouldn't at all, and there shouldn't be any risk of this, but you don't want it rocking or shifting its position on the axle stands on that side. It, sh it won't, um, but just in case, you, you don't want to tempt fate. So we're just going to ease it down nice and gently. Then we drop the axle, the, we drop the, then we drop the jack right down. So we can then clear the jack out from underneath the car, remembering even with a very low profile jack like this, it's still very easy to catch the underneath of the car. I've got the jack underneath the correct jacking point on the, on the longitudinal chassis rail, and I'm just gonna let this down now. I've pulled out both axle stands. So this is the last bit guys, apart from talking up the wheels. So just gently, as gently as possible. It does come down still quite quickly, but there we go. And then drop the jack right out of the way and pull it clear so that there's no messing around, catching yourself on the jack, tripping over, catching the car and anything else and obviously being very careful. So now we have to go around and torque up the wheels. Now, the torque for these wheels, as detailed in the workshop manual, is 100 newton meters. So you set your torque wrench to 100 newton meters. 
Some people talk them up to 110, some 190, 120. I'm gonna talk it up to 100 and see how it goes. If it feels it's not tight enough, I might nip it up a little bit more. Um, that's because I've got the spacers on here now. That may take up a little bit of slack with the spacers and obviously I wanna make sure the bolts are tight or the screw bolts as they call them. Once we've gone out for a first drive in this, then when we come back, uh, we'll then go around and re the wheels again. And when you go out on the first drive as well, which is what we'll be doing, you take it very steadily, especially as these have got spacers on now. You just wanna make sure that everything is right. There's no wheel wobble, no shake, and that the wheels are correct. So this is just a Halfords torque wrench. It's a very good quality. I think it's the best quality torque wrench they provide. Um, I'm not too much into electronic torque wrenches. So this is the old style. Um, this is a click handle torque wrench rather than electronic meter. So to, to set this torque wrench up, you pull out the handle, which takes off the lock. And then using this meter here, you've got newton meters on the left and you've got pound foot of torque on the right. So newton meters is what I'm gonna use as a scale. And you can see the marker there. I'm just gonna wind it up to 100, which is there. And then lock. So it's set to 100 newton meters of torque and we've got the lock in there. So now we go around and again, using the opposites technique, we're gonna tighten up the bolts, we're gonna torque the bolts up and we're gonna tighten them up first, depending on how much um, they need to be turned. You don't whack them right up to the torque first of all. You do each wheel judiciously, each, sorry, each bolt or screw judiciously, but opposing. So you do opposing size. Say, say where you would torque up a cylinder head. It's actually picking up the torque quite quickly because I tightened it up fairly well. You can hear the click there as it goes, as the torque is reached. So that's 100 Newton meters. I think you only need to join me for this wheel because it's just doing the same bloody thing. So I'll just, guys, so I'll just talk this one up for you, do the rear wheels. Again, very close to the 100 Newton meters of torque because I've tightened the wheel up quite a lot beforehand. I'm just gonna go around again. Again, opposing sides. That's the two rear wheels torqued up. I'm gonna do the front two now as well, but you don't really need to join me for that. Otherwise it's just to be black shit boring. So we've pulled over just to show you the difference in the with the wheels recolouring and the wheels fitment now that the changes um, now that we've had the changes made and also to talk you through the wheel recolouring process. Now yeah there were issues but first of all look at the colour look at the look at the condition of the car now it makes a hell of a difference with these wheels. These tyres are now 245s on the front, so they were, they're normally 235s, so that means they're a little bit wider, so they're pulling out and they're filling out the arches a bit more. Remember, we put on 11 millimetre spacers. They're Hills engineered spacers, so they're very high end, very high quality. We have, of course, longer bolts extended by 11 millimetres. If you don't put longer bolts on, then you're gonna have serious problems with the wheels potentially um, coming off later on with the bolts coming out. Um, so these are 245 front tyres, and they've got 11 mil wheel spacers. So you could say it's come out 21 millimeters there. So 21 millimeters extended out an additional exterior offset on there. As you can see, it substantially fills out the arches better. It makes a hell of a difference. Um, if, you, if you compare the color as well, if you're comparing the color between how it was before and how it is now, you can see now that you've distinctly got the silver, the bright silver fleck in there, metallic fleck, it looks a substantial improvement over the, the Argento Nürburgring silver, the more flatter silver that we had before. So it's a vast improvement. So um, that's, a, that's a real big positive. You can see as well, as well on the rear arches, um, being extended out by 11 millimeters, obviously they're the standard um, size tires, the 295s on the back. But you can see it's extended out in the arch, so it's really filled out the arches nicely. It makes a hell of a difference to the aesthetics of the car. And regards to the 245s being on front, of course, because you've got more rubber on the asphalt, you're going to get better grip. So it's going to be a substantial improvement. Now, talk you through the wheel recolouring process. Yes, there were some issues. The whole wheel, wheel recolouring process took around um, nearly four weeks. 
And there, to be fair, there was a couple of bank holidays inserted in there, so that would have caused additional latency. Um, some of the, the wheels had to be recolored a couple of times to get it right. Um, so, you know, you can't have it all, you know, not everything's perfect all the time. And DLs have always looked after us. So yes, there were issues. Um, yes, they sorted out those issues and they got it right in the end. And they were very good regarding the pricing for us. So they looked after us again. So thank you DLs for that, for looking after us. Um, you know, it is what it is. You have some issues, nothing's perfect. We're ha very happy with the end result. They look fantastic on the car and that's the key thing. And we'll be going into the Switzerland trip now with the car looking absolutely awesome with brand new Michelin Pilot Sport 4S's on the car. And these tires, initial perception, fantastic compared to the Pirelli P0's that we had on there before. Now the Pirelli P0's were eight years old. These are brand new tires, so that alone is gonna make a massive difference. But Michelin Pilot Sport 4S's and these are the particular K1's that are Ferrari rated they are going to perform a lot better and for initial impressions are that they do but we're going to do an initial first drive video comparing these tyres against the old Pirelli P0s in a separate video so make sure you subscribe to catch that video and also guys make sure you subscribe to catch our future Switzerland European tour so we're going to be covering off driving straight down into Baden-Baden moving across the Geisbach we're going to be driving across the near Lake Como etc etc there's a few other areas that we're going to be hitting as well we're going to be staying at a different hotel every night so we catch the major passes in that particular location so we're going to move it be moving around a hell of a lot we're going to bring you directly with us so you're going to see all the driving on all those passes with all the other supercars that are coming with us at the end of the European tour there's a bonus point at the end of it so make sure you subscribe to catch that additional content it's really an awesome end bit that's tagged on i'll say more later so thanks a lot for watching guys if you enjoyed the video please give it a thumbs up very important for the good old youtube algorithm you know that's very important if you're not subscribed please think about subscribing it's free to do so doesn't cost you anything and you can unsubscribe anytime you want thanks a lot for watching guys and see you in the next video